prepare a message, and I did it this morning, so I, have all, I didn't have time to type things out, so I have all my different Bibles here, my different versions. So just bear with me this morning. It's going to be good. I know. You know, I just thought, you know, let me just bring all my Bibles, and I will, we will get through this. <laughs> what? This is not all her Bibles, <laughs> okay? Let's just get that on the record right now. I like a lot of different versions. So, you know, a lot, sometimes if you're just reading the King James or the New King James, right, sometimes you don't understand what in the world you're reading. So when you go through the different versions, it really helps you to understand the Word of God. Now, before we do this, we are starting the prayer and fasting tomorrow. Now, out in the foyer, we have just a little booklet, a guideline for all of us to follow. You know, if you don't want to follow it, you don't have to. But um, guidelines to follow for uh, our prayer and fasting time, it'll start January 6th to the, we had the day, oh yeah, January 6th to the 26th, and talks a little bit about the decade of the mouth, we follow the Hebraic calendar, I'll explain a little bit when I, a little bit when I start speaking today, um, and so I have information on that, um, <clears throat> different types of fast, you know, you have to ask the Lord what he wants you to do. For some of you, you know, you may have to just do a word fast, stop murmuring and complaining. We did that one, one time. I think it's not eating food is easier. But uh, we don't realize how much we murmur and complain and all the stuff that we say that's not necessary. So you may want to consider that. You can do a one-day fast. I mean, um, have one meal a day, not eat, uh, you know, what, however the Lord tells you. Uh, so that's between you and the Lord, okay? So we have uh, guidelines here. So um, I really, really want to encourage everybody. We're in, and during this time, we're going to be reading the book of Acts. We want to encourage everybody to follow along corporately. And so each day, you know, we will read, uh, you know, each chapter. We'll send, you know, words out. We will, as of next week, corporately meet together. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know the dates. Uh, we really want to encourage you to come on out and pray. Prayer changes things. You know, with Pat going down to Trenton, prayer changes things. How many of you know that we need help in New Jersey, right? So prayer changes things. We can complain about it. We can talk bad about it, but that's not going to do anything but give the devil a place. But if we pray and we decree the word of the Lord and understand the power of God that's within us, it'll make a huge difference, all right? So I just want to encourage you with that. Here's my book. I, um, I, it's a revised edition. Uh, it's a 21-day fast to break the cycle of unbelief. You can get it on Amazon. I forgot to order more copies, but you can get it on Amazon. And there's also a, um, you can download the ebook. okay? And then uh, before I forget, Janet Schuler, why don't you come on up real quick? Janet has her, did you bring your books? Okay, they're in the lobby. And so just tell them the name of the book, and I will promise you I'll get started. So your book on prayer walking. Step on. It's Step on It, an intercessor's manual uh, for prayer walking. It's, I, you, I, I'm, I love you, Pat, for going to Trenton. She's putting her foot in it, foot on it. She's stepping on it. And the word says in Deuteronomy 11, 24, and 25 that wherever the sole of your foot will tread, he has given it to you. And so this is a manual to equip and empower you to take the land and release the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, the kingdom goes. So I'd like to honor my cousin Rosemary and her husband Joe, who's here, and her friend Lucia. So welcome. It's good to see you. So anyway, we were in Texas, and I'll tell you, if you've never been able to go, I, I, I know a lot of you watch Gloria Zion online. It, you really should try to make it. It's just phenomenal. You have the nations there. It, it's just the, the presence and the glory of God is amazing. And... Um, so you can get it online. It's Glory of Zion. I think it's .org. And you can watch the replays of the meetings. It's well worth it. So we were there, and you just get really pumped up from all the marvelous speakers that they had out there. But something that's been on my heart for a while is uh, about the, uh, God rebuilding and asking us to rebuild our altar of intimacy. And uh, so that's what I'm going to share about today. So we, are, we have entered into the Hebraic year 5780, and that is a decade of the mouth. It's pay. 
Now, in the Gregor we follow the Gregorian calendar, but you know, in, in, in AD 20, 325, Constantine shifted everything because he didn't, he saw the power of God on the Hebrew people and he didn't want them following the one true God and he shifted things. You can look, you can Google this information. And so the enemy always counterfeits everything. So he has the astrology. When we know that we don't read, right? We don't read astrology because we know that that's not of God. But now the Hebrew, he gives us guidelines monthly. And even every decade, he gives us guidelines. So that's what um, the, the, this decade that we've entered into is 5780. It's a decade of the mouth. And so a lot of us have big mouths, right? <laughs> But the Lord is saying, I want you to speak my word, and I want you to know the authority and power that we all have within us. And, and so we're going to talk a lot about that today. So the scripture that the Lord uh, really wanted me to start off with, I have it in two different versions. And it's in Isaiah 43, 19, and the, well, 18 and 19, and the Amplified. And this is what it says. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully, for I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. All right, I, I got to take this band-aid off my finger. I can't turn the pages here. So um, God is saying to us, don't, listen, don't focus on what's been. Because a lot of what's happened in our lives is what's caused us to be on kind of shut down a little bit because, you know, it's been a rough season for a lot of us. And so, uh, you know, in Isaiah 43, in the, the Passion, it says, stop dwelling on your past. Don't even remember these former things. I'm doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? He said, I will make a way in the wilderness and I will open up flowing streams in the desert. And we need the spirit of the Lord to do that because when you have circumstances and issues in your life where there's been wounds and, you know, hurts and stuff, well, you know, God is saying, listen, I want you to cut the, 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 the cords, cut the ties to what's held you back. What, what good is it doing you anyhow, right? So he's saying, choose to forgive, choose to let things go. Don't dwell on what's behind you. And he said, I want you to do a new thing. And so in this time, in this season of the mouth, you know, I said, Lord, show me things that, you know, the Bible says out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. What's coming out of your mouth? You know, what's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying? What are you saying about situations? There's so many things that we can be negative about. You know, I, our governor, I can say a lot about him, not nice things. And so the Lord said to me, well, are you praying for him? I'm like, no, I don't like him. And he said to me, pray for him. He said he needs help. I'm like, oh, my God, what is this man doing? So prayer changes things, right? Our complaining does nothing but give way for the enemy. He says prayer changes things, amen? So one of the things that God is asking us to do is, uh, and I'm going to take us, we're going to go to 1 Kings 18 is to repair the altar, our altars. And that what I'm talking about is our heart issues. Repair the altars on our heart. And we can go to 1 Kings 18. And let's see, which scripture did I start with? Okay, let's start with 17. Oh, there we go. Good boy. All right. It says here, when Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, are you the one who is bringing disaster on Israel? In another version, it says, are you the troubler of Israel? We have that ability in us. We have the spirit of God in us that can trouble what the enemy's plans are. And it says, Elisha said, I have not brought disaster on Israel, but you and your father's household have. And by abandoning and rejecting the commandments of the Lord and by following Baal. Sounds like America. Now then, send word and gather to me all Israel, all of Israel at Mount Carmel, to, together with 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the goddess Asherah, who will eat at Queen Jezebel's table. In verse 20, you can go to the next one. It says, so Ahab sent word to all the Israelites and assembled the pagan prophets together at Mount Carmel. Elisha approached all the people and said, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? 
It's how long will you, another version says, how long will you falter between two opinions? Or in, in the Amplify, but it didn't come out on this one, but it says how long will you limp between two opinions? In America, and even in our lives, how long will we falter? How long are we going to go in between faith and unbelief, doubt and unbelief? How long? And this isn't a condemning word. God is saying, how long will you falter between two opinions? Either you believe me or you don't, right? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if he's Baal, follow him. But the people of Israel didn't answer him so much as a word. And then I jump down to verse 24. And, uh, well, let me, hold on a second. Uh, first Kings 18. Hold on a second, you guys. Um, so where was that? 20. All right. And then, all right. So then Elisha said, uh, I'm alone. He said, you know, I'm, I'm the only prophet here. Sometimes we feel like we're the only ones crying out to God, but that's not true. But he said, uh, he asked, he, he said to them, look, just take two bulls. And, and cut them up and, and do your thing there. And he laid it, it says here, he cut the bulls in pieces and laid it on a wool, on the wood, and no fire was under it. And he said, I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood and no fire under it. In other words, he said, look, I'm going to get things in order. And, you know, wood represents our humanity. He's saying, listen, I'm going to lay things in order. And he's asking, God is asking us, we've got to get back to the foundations and lay things in order. And, and then it says in verse 24, then you call on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it's well spoken. Now I'm telling you in our own personal lives and in our nation, this is where we're at. God is saying to us, there's a war and you know, the Bible says there's no equal to our God. But God is saying to us, we're going to see a demonstration of the supernatural power of God. We're going to see whose God is going to win, the God of this world or, or the God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And, and this is what's happening. The Jezebel spirit, and, and I'll explain a little bit about that, that's trying to infiltrate the churches. Listen, the church has the answer to bring breakthrough because that's how this was designed. We have, you know, the, the people of God, not just certain people. We're all kings and priests in the kingdom of God. We all have that right and that authority to decree a thing that it shall be established unto us, the Bible says. And so the Lord is saying, how long will you falter between two opinions? How long are you going to be lukewarm in your walk with God? Either we're hot or we're cold. And, and you know what? It's always better to be hot. For God, because when you're lukewarm, you're frustrated. And so God is saying, check your hearts out. We all have to check our hearts. This isn't, I'm not, I'm not preaching at you. This is something the Lord's been speaking to me for a while about that we have got to consecrate ourselves in a way like never before. And I know a lot of you, I mean, I know we're prayer warriors. I know we're praying, but God is saying there's too much distraction. There's too much stuff that our eyes keep, you know, getting off track. All good things, but we have to consecrate ourselves in this season and, and a surrender for the fire of God, for the breakthrough of God, for the illumination of the spirit of the Lord upon us so that the world, when they look at us, they say, there is something there that I want. We were coming home last night. We got, we had a driver pick us up and I was really tired. Peter was tired. And a lot of times we, we minister to the people who pick us up and from this service, this car service. And I wasn't feeling so hot. And I thought, oh, I'm not talking to anybody. I just was sitting there quiet. Peter was talking to the guy. And all of a sudden, the, the guy starts talking about an issue he has with his phone. And as he started, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and says, he's got a problem with pornography. And I'm like, oh, great. What am I going to do with that, Lord? You know, Lord, I don't even feel like talking. I'm going to say, by the way, brother, do you have a problem with pornography? You know, like, what? So I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, Lord, please. Not tonight. So what happened, he's talking, and then the guy says, I'm a, I, you know, I don't know. I'm having a problem with my phone, and, and I'm, it's freezing, and blah, blah, blah. Peter said, turn it on, turn it off. Oh, you know, I'm like, ugh. So I'm just listening to them talk. And then he goes, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I have a problem with pornography. <laughs> Do you think that's the problem? Like, yes, that is the problem. <laughs> so, I mean, he just started, like, 
pouring his heart out from him just talking about his phone to, I have a problem. We were able to pray with him and, and you know, uh, have him, you know, surrender his heart. But th see, this is what I'm saying. The world, they're crying out. And I said, Lord, how am I, I what are we going to talk about pornography? But see, God made a way. God made a way. The world wants what we have. But if we don't believe we have what we have, come on. So he's saying, how long will you falter between two opinions? And I'm talking to the church here. How, how many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, have had doubts about God? <laughs> I'll raise my hand. How, how many times have you been pressing in and you're praying and that delay causes you to like, oh my God, and we try and we blame God. But see, the Lord's saying, get on your faces before me. We're listening to this person and we're listening to that person online. And listen, I like all that stuff. But you know what? We have to get back to basics. And we have to get on our own faces before the Lord to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, to pray in tongues. Uh, Tim Sheets says, he said, I think it was Tim Sheets, that tongues is a governmental language. It's powerful. We've got to, you know, it's like being charged to, you know, charged up with a battery charger, right? So when we, I, I've shared this before, but some of you haven't heard this. When uh, Cheryl and I, we were in India, and the guy, our luggage went through, and, and one of the guys there wouldn't give us our luggage. And, you know, we had a, connect, we had a connection flight. And so we're calling him, he's calling him, and, and, and he's not listening to us. I thought, I am going to smack this guy. You know, they have a problem with women in some of these countries. I mean, uh, they do in America as well, but, but so much, you know, more so in foreign countries. So my friend and I, we looked at each other, and we just started praying in tongues. And so we're, we're loud, and we're going back and forth. Before the Lord, the guy went like this. I can't, you know what? I cannot wear these stinking shoes with my pantyhose. <laughs> Sorry. That's why when I pray for someone, I almost fell over her. Anyway, so the guy went all the way back, and then another guy came forward and said, can I help you? We're like, yes, give us our bag. And he said, oh, yes, madam. And he gave us our bag. That's the power of our tongue. That's the power of praying in the spirit. See, and so what happens is we all have to be reserved. We had a lady come in here and say that she was getting aggravated because we were praying in the spirit. And I thought, well, we didn't start the church not praying in the spirit. <laughs> you know, if you don't like it, I mean, I can show you another church to go to. So, and I did, I did help her go to another church. She didn't want, she said her child was getting really intimidated by that. That's baloney. That is a spirit of the religion and the enemy wants us to be so prim and proper and quiet it doesn't mean you have to act like a fool, but what it's saying is, come on, we need to be bold. It's the decade of the mouth. Decree that thing. Speak the word of the Lord. And, and you know, activate what the Spirit of God has within us. Pray in tongues. I'm going to encourage you every day. Pray in the Spirit. Pray all day long. You can be vacuuming and praying in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. So it's a governmental language. So, you know, God... Over here, he said, listen, we're, we're, there, there's a deciding factor here. And so what happened was, in verse 27, the people started mocking. They were mocking Elisha. No different than in our time how people mock us. Oh, you're fanatical. Oh, how many times, you know, you have family members or people like roll their eyes like, oh, here they go again. That's right. That's right. But who do you come to when you need prayer to get results? Right? So, uh, yeah. So, Elisha mocked them. And so then Elisha started mocking them. And so what they started doing was they started cutting themselves with their knives and their lances. No different than people who have an issue with cutting themselves. Right? And so they uh, were really struggling there. And Elisha, you know, was watching them. And, and they were, it, I mean, it says here, midday passed, and they played the part of the prophets. And he said, until the evening, there was no voice, there was no answer, and there was no one who paid attention. Our God pays attention. See, our altar is a place for us to surrender and encounter God. Then here's my focus today. Then Elisha said to all the people, come near to me. And all the people came near, and he repaired the old altar of the Lord that had been broken down by Jezebel. Now, he repaired the altar, and that word there is Rapha, 
It's the word uh, for healing. He healed that altar. He healed, um, you know, the, 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 the time. He knew that he could not war against Jezebel unless there was that intimate time. We have to gather ourselves again. We have to wait upon the Lord. You know, a lot of things for us is about convenience, right? I mean, let's face it. And God is saying, it's not going to be have it your way anymore. We're not going through a drive through in Burger King. You know, it's have it God's way. What is the spirit of the Lord saying? God wants us to do it his way, to wait on the Lord, to, get, to meditate on the word. Joshua 1 says that you will meditate on the word day and night. Therein you will have good success and you will prosper. Right? So God, we're people of power. We have dunamis power. That means dynamite. We, we have the spirit of God, the breath of God in us. That's Holy Spirit. When we're speaking, it's the breath of God. When we're speaking words in faith. So Jezebel. Now, how, I'm sure a lot of you here know about Jezebel. But he said here, listen to this. He said, I'm repairing the old altar of the Lord that had been broken down by Jezebel, that had been overthrown, that had been destroyed. And, and so when you look at even the past 10 years of situations that have occurred, you know, the enemy has always been in infiltrating any which way he, he, he tries. But, you know, God is greater. You know, so again, I'm just sharing this. I'm not going to say like, you know, that the enemy, oh, my God, we have to be afraid of the enemy. He's under our feet. Yeah. But see, if we don't have our time before the Lord, and if we're not hearing our own revelation, that's the privilege we have as sons and daughters, is to have our, our revelation, to get the strategy from God. Um, you know, we, we become deficient. So Jezebel, Jezebel, her name means uncommitted, uh, uh, without cohabitation, there was no unity. There was no oneness but she, between she and her husband. They didn't, you know, join forces there. And, and she, she didn't commit. It also meant unmarried. And she refused to live in peaceful cohabitation is what the scripture says. And Jezebel wouldn't submit. And Jezebel was the daughter of, a, of Ethbel, who was a, a priest, a high priest of this goddess of love and sensual pleasure. Jezebel represents perverted sex, body cutting, orgies, child sacrifice, uh, abortion, rebellion. Um, this is what Jezebel represents. Is that sort of like what we're experiencing here in America, right? Infiltrated the churches, infiltrated the land, but God... So Elisha was in a bad season there. It seemed like, you know, it's just a difficult time. See, but God has a plan. He's not like, oops, I can't believe they're in this place, my people. He has a strategy plan for all of us, and he's got a way of escape. And so I'm so encouraged because even though things seem so dark, the spirit of God, the light within us is shining brighter and brighter and brighter, but we have to know who we are. And that every single one of us, every single one of us, we have that authority and we're kings and priests. And God is saying, get before me, hear my voice, so that when you're in your situation where you have to say, how long, how long? Lord, I'm calling upon the name of God and I need the fire of the Lord. When I'm saying this about the fire of God, I don't mean like burn your enemy like or your husband or or somebody like that or a family member it's not what I'm saying amen, amen brother you're safe so <laughs> what I'm saying is you know about the enemy the enemy is the enemy right not the people even though they may act like one but the enemy is the enemy and so God wants us to understand the power and the greatness of our God that's within us and that he has a strength amen brother thank you for that so anyway so, and in, in, in this spirit always wants to cause up strife and division. But see, so Elisha said he knew, he knew from the Lord, I cannot call upon the fire of God to come down. He's a prophet, remember. He's been doing great exploits. He said, I can't go further right now. I need to get before the Lord and rebuild my altar. And that's what God's asking us today. We have to rebuild our altar of intimacy, rebuild our altar of prayer. And for some of you, if you might feel like, I don't know what to do, that's okay. We can teach you because, you know, we're all learning. None of us have arrived here. And we're all learning to press into God and to, to, to wait upon him, to meditate on his word. He loves that. He sees us as his children. And he wants to train us and teach us. And so... Elisha, he knew, like, man, I can't go forward. I need the wisdom from God. I need the strategy from the Lord, and I need to wait upon the Lord. I have to make sure my heart's right. 
I have to make sure that I'm not walking in unforgiveness or unbelief. You know, and so when you're daily before the Lord, the Holy Spirit is so wonderful and he shows us. And then Elijah took 12 stones in verse 31, according to the numbers of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. And the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name and self-revelation of the Lord. He made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and he cut the bulls and did all that stuff and he filled uh, four jar jars with water and poured it on the burnt offering and the water in the word always represents i mean the word water in the bible represents the word so we have got to meditate on the word we cannot go any further without meditating on the word we have got to meditate on the word and we will teach a course here, uh, and we said we were going to start in September, but we will do one, and just even teaching you how to study the Bible. And nowadays, it's even easy with everything online. And so the Lord is asking us, do you want to come up higher, yeah. right? Do you want to see the breakthrough in your life? Do you want to see more and more? He said, we will do greater works. We're in this season. We're in this season that when you see that person that's, that's you know, you know, just drug addicted or, 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 or you, know, you know, just whatever it is that, that, man, that you just have that, you know, God is saying, I want a greater levels of my authority that you lay hands on them instantly oh, delivered. Yeah. I was instantly delivered from drugs. Oh. Why not now? Yeah. Right? So God is a miracle working yeah. God. And he turns the hearts back to him. That's what he wants. It's not like, oh, God, look at that person. Oh, my God, I can't believe that kind of person. You know, blah, blah, blah. they're doing this kind of sin, that kind of sin. Well, that was some of us. So that's why we all have to watch our hearts and how we judge people. But the thing is, do we have compassion? Jesus moved with compassion, and that's when the people were healed. So, but the thing is, we have to check our hearts. Are you, do you have a hardened heart? Remember, the disciples were with Jesus for three years, and he said, he goes, you know what, you guys, you, you still don't believe because your heart is evil because it's hard. They hung out with Jesus for three years. So it's possible you can go to church 15 times a week that you have a hard heart. So during this time, it's like, Lord, show me my heart. Because what happens is when you go through circumstances in, in life, you know, life, situations happen. So you get a little disillusioned. And you get disappointed, right? How many of you have been disappointed in your walk with the Lord? Like, why is this happening? Like, why? So God's not the problem. But I can promise you he has a way out. And he has a solution. So the enemy wants you to pull back and become passive and complacent. And the Lord say, no, no, let my fire burn on you. You know, Leviticus 6 and chapter 9, it also says that the fire has to be kept burning on the altar always, eternally. That's the altar of our heart, not going through the motions, coming to church and just, you know, doing your little check-in and your time clock thing. No, it's about, Lord, what do you have for me? He has a purpose and a plan. He has destiny for all of us. And it's not just to come to church and sit in the pew and you did your thing on Sunday. He had, we all have the opportunity of, the, of operating that breaker anointing. God, and let me tell you something. The enemy wants to put you to sleep. And, and, and we need the spirit of Elijah to wake people up out of their slumber. We need to wake up and, and see and, be, and walk in the discernment of the Lord and recognize. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy wants to lull you to sleep and let you even think of your family members. This is a lot of baloney. But I'm going to tell you something. When you have prayed over someone who was dead and he came back to life, then you start believing that God's a miracle work in God. Martin was healed of cancer, level four cancer. Then you start believing. You're not going to be straddling the fence. It's either you're hot or cold. In Revelation 3, 19, 22, in the Amplified, it says, Those whom I dearly and tenderly love, I rebuke and discipline, showing them their faults and instructing them. He didn't say criticize. He didn't say condemn. He's showing us our heart to say, hey, wake up. Where are you at? You know, we have a critical eye. And we've gotten along and we've aligned with the world, especially with uh, the government, and, and cursing them and calling them names and this and that and saying or this and that. It's not good. It's hindering you. Let me just say this. It's hindering your walk. We don't have a right. I, it hinders my walk. 
So it says here, so be enthusiastic and repent. Listen, change your inner self. He didn't say, ask me to change it. He says, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sin, sinful behavior. Seek God's will. Sin means hitting, missing the mark. Behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and restore him and he with me. He who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the son of God, I will grant to him the privilege to sit beside me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down beside my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. And this is the word of the Lord. This is what the spirit of God is saying to us. In the um, passion, it says, listen, I know what you do. I know that you're neither frozen in apathy nor fervent with passion. How I wish you were either hot one or the other. But because you are neither cold nor hot, he says here, but lukewarm, I'm about to spit you from my mouth. For you claim I'm rich and getting richer. I don't need a thing. Yet you are clueless that you're miserable, poor, blind, barren, and naked. This is God speaking. So I counsel you to purchase gold perfected by fire so that you can be truly rich. Purchase a white garment to cover and clothe your shameful Adam nakedness. Pur purchase eye salve to be placed over your eyes so that you can truly see. And that's been my heart. I said, Lord, open up my eyes. I will put that eye salve on because I'm not going to act as though I'm better than anybody else that I walk because I haven't walked on water yet. Show me where I'm at. Lord, I just want, I want to hear, I've been, you know, really pressing in and praying in the spirit and, and just enjoying. It's been fabulous. In the beginning, it's, you know, you're, you're, it's like you're getting, like, you know, getting started. You're trying. And so read a chapter a day, pray in the spirit, listen to worship music, but make sure you set like a calendar date. Like when I started doing this, I got like a day timer at the time, you know, and, and I set a time. It was a half hour. Well, I really started out with five minutes a day, and then I went to 15, and then I went to a half hour. Just be realistic. Wherever you're at, just start. But we can't. I mean, you can if you want, and, and just be busy, 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 and just go about your day and just do your whole thing and not talk with him. Or, or, or you, can, you, can, you can make a way, you know, and, and, and you know, it's, it's a privilege for us to hear the King of Kings and hear what the Lord has to say. And uh, so the Lord is, is giving us, he's challenging us, he's asking us, will you come? Will you allow me to build you up? Will you allow me to take the things that you've been trying to get in order? Will you allow my spirit to develop you? So what happened was he put the things in order, he filled the jars with water, and he poured it on the burnt offering. And then he said in verse 34, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Then he said, do it a third time. And they did it the third time. The water ran around the altar, and he filled the trench with water. And at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elisha the prophet came near and said, O oh Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. And, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Verse 37, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you alone are God, and have turned their backs back to you. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. I love that. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. And Elisha said, seize the prophets of Baal, and let not one of them escape. And then, so let me just pause here. This is what God is saying to us. Come back to me. Allow my fire, allow the spirit of the Lord rise up in us in ways that we have not experienced before. Because we're going from faith to faith and glory to glory. This is what God's asking us to do. And he's saying we can't straddle the fence any longer. And we just can't go through the motions. And the Lord wants us to, in Acts 3.19, it says, so repent, change your mind and purpose, turn around. And return to God, that your sins will be erased, blotted out, wiped out. That times the refreshing of recovering from the effects of the heat of reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. See, he's our hope. And the Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, there's been people, he said, that are here today that he said that have hope deferred. 
where you've been struggling with um, hopelessness. And the Lord wants you to know that he has heard your cry. He has bottled up the tears upon your head. I mean, you're, he's, he's numbered the hairs upon your head. It's, you're not defeated. You're not hopeless. He's the God of hope, and he has a strategy and a plan. He has a purpose for all of us. You know, I, I've been to uh, a lot of different places and a lot of different churches, and, um, you know, and what God wants to do is set everybody ablaze, set everybody on fire, because there's been churches that have settled, and there's churches and, and people that have allowed sin in the camp. And, 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 and that can't be any longer. And so we can say, oh, well, I'm not fornicating. I'm not getting high. I'm not parting. But you can have unforgiveness in your heart or bitterness or have a judgmental, critical spirit. And let me tell you something. The spirit of religion hates on anything like this. Hates when we're talking about our worship and hates when we're talking about praying in the spirit. You know what? David said, I'll be even to his wife, um, my, Michael. He said, I'll be even more undignified than this. And the Bible went on to say, but she became barren. So we don't want to have a barren spirit. And I just am admonishing you and challenging you to, to really rise up and allow the spirit of God to overtake you. Because this is what God's saying. Listen, I want you to have even better and greater. I want you to get a download for your business. I want, how many of you need strategy for your business? I mean, like we all do. We need strategy for the church. He's like, you know, God is God of all impossibility. And so anyway, so the Lord wants us to uh, understand that the altar is powerful. Psalm 29 says that the voice of the Lord is powerful. It says the voice of the Lord shatters. The voice of the Lord thunders. Well, guess what? We're his voice. And we're walking in the things of the Lord, when we are decreeing, like it says in Job, and I'll, and I'll read it again to you, Job 22, it says, you shall decree that thing and it shall be established. That word decree means decide. And it even says that the light of his presence will illuminate from you. And it says, even those that you're praying for that's not innocent will get saved. Right. See, we have, the enemy does every, he knows the power we have. Right. So we're, he knows that we're committed, that we're not going to pull back, but he can get us where our hearts shut down. That's his strategy, to get our hearts to become hardened, to get our, our hearts to be like, all right, you know what? These people are a little too crazy. You know, like, like, let's not get crazy over here. No, either you're hot or you're cold. And he doesn't want us to understand the dunamis power. That word means dynamite power that we have within us, that we have that incredible power of the living God in each and every one of us. I don't care who you are, how long you're saved, He's saying that's available to you. It's available to you. It's for all of us to operate in. But see, when we try to get in our head all the time, try to understand it, the Bible says in Isaiah, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are way above your thoughts, right? We can't, he, it's spirit to spirit, so we cannot intellectualize and understand God in a way that, that like with our natural brain, it's not happening, so that's going to really foul you up if you're always trying to come at it from that logical uh, uh, mindset. But God is encouraging us. He's saying, listen, I'm asking you to, to, to press into me. I'm asking you to set your time and, and sit with me. I'm asking you to decree. This is a time where we have to decree. We, you know, and, and we always had to. So it's, I'm not just saying it's just this, uh, it, blah, this time. But we have to speak the word of the Lord. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of your word. What are you speaking over yourself? So it's worship, it's, it's, de it's developing our prayer altar. And again, you don't have to be religious about it. You can go on a walk and have the most marvelous time with the Lord. You know, I mean, it would be wonderful if we had the beach available to us right now. And, uh, right? I mean, don't you hear God when you're at the beach? Oh, my God. So, you know, wherever it is, but get before God, interact with him, dialogue with him. But I'm telling you, God said to me, and I've said this many times here, God said, I want you to get prepared for what's ahead. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. It's not a scare thing, tactic. I don't know what's ahead. I just know he said, get ready. So, he, again, he doesn't feel like he has to tell me all the different steps. He just said, obey me. 
right? So get ready for what's ahead. Get your hearts ready. Become, you cannot, you know, just become strong in the Lord. Know, know your God. Know, know his character. One of the things I had him put in the um, fasting thing are some of the names of the Lord, the redemptive names of God, who he is. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our righteousness. We're righteous. We are in right standing because of his blood, right? Not for our good works. Now, does the Lord want us to walk in righteousness? Yes, but, you know, we're not going to like, oh, I'm so good. I'm this. No, no, you need to walk in humility. But we, he's our righteousness. He's our healer, right? He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He's Jehovah Makedesh. He's, he's the one who sanctifies us, the power of the blood, right? And so, you know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, there's so many different, El Elyon, he's the most high God. He's El Shaddai, he's God Almighty, Psalm 91. Psalm 23 has almost all the names of God in that. I mean, he's there for us. So, so it's like, you know, check your heart right now. Like, Lord, where am I at? Are you moving forward in him? Or are you stagnant? Do you really believe that God will answer prayer? Or not. We were in, in um, Texas, and this guy from Ethiopia, Mefsin, I don't know how to say his name. It, it said they, I heard the beginning part of the message, and he said, you know, this guy just raised six people from the dead. Right? So, I mean, we have that ability in us. We, we prayed. We, we didn't, wasn't playing, but when, when the guy died in the restaurant, we cast the spirit of death out of him. He came back to life. But that's in all of us. That's in all of us. But God is saying, don't look at certain people as having more than you. God is saying, I'm an equal opportunity God. It is for each and every one of us. He's saying, listen, it, you, you know, it, you have not because you ask not. He's saying, allow the spirit of God in you to rise up. Allow my spirit to overtake that which the enemy has set against you. You know, I'm, I've been preparing a, a message on the vengeance of the Lord. And the Lord says in, in Psalm, and it's, uh, Psalms or Isaiah 34, he says that, um, that his vengeance is now, and he's settling, he's here to settle all of our accounts. And it's not, remember what I said last week, it's not revenge, it's he's here to avenge us. Remember the, the woman with the unjust um, judge, and she kept going before him, going before him, and it literally says that she black and blued me, because <laughs> she didn't let up. And the Lord says, I'm much better, he goes, I'm God, and I'm faithful of this, you know, I'm not going to allow this, this circumstances of, to overtake you, he said, because I'm a God of justice. So God wants us to believe that. So just know that God wants us to um, press in, know that we have power, know that when we are speaking, we are going to see the miracle work and power unlike anything we've ever experienced. And we have seen, and I know a lot of you have, uh, God break through and bring deliverance and heal in so many ways. We have, I mean, just like what we're praying for your cousin in Italy, her cousin, you know, who, who the doctor said was brain dead. Well, he's now in a rehab center. He's, he was able to stand up. Some, some of the miracles, a miracle, you know, there are certain things that happen instantaneous, and then there's other things that's progressive. But we don't give up, and we don't back down. And so because if God be for us, the Bible says, who can be against us? And my favorite scripture is with God, absolutely nothing shall be called impossible. Nada, absolutely nothing shall be called impossible. So what is that very thing that you're believing God for? I'm going to ask you to stand. What is that thing you're asking God to, that, that you need breakthrough for? And, and I'm challenging you, write down the things like, you know, like on a piece of paper when you go home. Write down the things that you believe and, and write down, be honest, what you, you're really having a struggle trusting God with. Then I want you to get scripture that will back up the promises because the Bible says that, that he can do all things. You know, the Bible says that he's our healer. You know, even uh, Dodie Oldstein, when she uh, wrote her book, um, they gave her, I think it was a couple of weeks to live. Well, she's living 25 years now. <laughs> you know, I mean, God healed her of cancer. See, it, it, it's God saying, listen, don't, don't get into your head about this stuff. Get into the spirit. Get into the spirit. Judy Hall, you told me that she had to get certain type of medicine, and it was going to be like $40,000, and they didn't know how it was going to work out, and, and they were praying and praying. God forgave. Uh, the, the bill was forgiven. She didn't even have to pay it. See, God makes a way where there is no way. It's not our problem. He said that the battle is the Lord's. 
The battle is the Lord's. What are you trusting God for? See, we have to come up higher. It's like, well, it hasn't happened. What did I start out with? Consider not the former things of old. He said, listen, I'm doing a new thing. It may not have happened in that next last season. doesn't mean it's not going to happen now. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because enemy, you can't drive your car looking in your rearview mirror. You're going to get in an accident. Allow the Lord to say, no, I'm cutting that off. I'm that old mindset of disappointment. That God is breaking off hope deferred. God is breaking off the, the fear of even pressing into the Lord because you're going to be disappointed again. God's saying, don't go there. Don't go there. We are an army of God. That's who the Bible calls us. We are a powerful group of people. And the Lord wants you to see yourself. Don't you see yourself as the, uh, the Israelites did. They came back and they said, oh, we're nothing but grasshoppers. We see ourselves as grasshoppers. If you see yourself as a grasshopper today, you need to repent and ask God to forgive you. Listen, there have been circumstances in my life where I did feel that way. You know, certain areas you feel really like, Whoa, you know, and then other areas you're like, oh, Lord, I don't know if you're going to come through for me here. I don't know how, you know, most of the time it's the way we see ourselves. And so, you know, the Lord's had to really deal with my heart. I can really, I was able to really believe great things for others. But when it came to me, I was like, well, I don't know if God's going to really do it for me. Anybody ever feel that way? Yeah. So that's what the Lord said to me. He goes, you're going to have to shift and stop. So let's, let's align our lives. Let's align our minds. Now, for some of you, the Lord just spoke to me and said, you're like, well, I don't know. I don't like to read. I don't really like to do this stuff. Well, the Lord says that he'll help you. And he wants you to give him a chance. When I got saved, I said to the Lord, I don't want you to take away my desire for getting high. I know, it's a stupid prayer, right? I said, I'll get saved, but I'm going to still do my thing. And he said, really? <laughs> we'll see about that. And I lost my desire. I never, I never, ever touched drug again in my life. Never, never, never had a desire for it. God, God's saying to me, I didn't want to read. I like magazines. I didn't want to read the Bible. But, <laughs> yeah, they had fashion in it. It was cute. So the Lord said to me, just, just give me a chance. And I, and I started, I devoured the word. And I had little booklets that helped me. And, and Elena Fetch, you were there at Eastern Airlines. She got saved there. And, I mean, I saw miracles. I never, I thought when people would fall out in the power of God, I thought they passed out. I had no clue. I didn't know what any of this stuff was. God showed up. He, he's no respecter of persons. He wants turnaround. It turned my life around. Turn, transformed me. I was depressed, miserable, hopeless, thought about dying all the time. And God turned my life around. He's still doing that. He's still doing that. And he wants to do it for you. Don't allow the spirit of the enemy to hold you back. Don't say, well, this is for you. You're too much. No baloney. God is saying the enemy's been too much in your life. Now shift that and allow the spirit of God to overtake you. We have to be that army, that militant army that's breaking through. We have the breaker anointing within us that's breaking through our families, that's breaking through situations and job situations. And, you know, some of you right now, if you're still feeling angry or bitter, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to choose to forgive. Please, let's not blame God. He's the one that's on our side. And, and the Lord told me, he said, you know, because my thing is why. I don't understand why, Lord. He said, stop it. He said, because you're not going to know why all the time. You're going to have to trust me. So let's pray. So, Lord, we just thank you for your amazing love. God, we thank you that you are the God who answers by fire. Lord, you're the God of breakthrough. You're our deliverer, oh God. There's nothing that we're battling with, oh God, that you can't handle, that you can't cause breakthrough to occur. This is not our lot in life to stay the way we're at. Because with you, nothing shall be called impossible. And Lord, we take the limits off. Lord, your word says in Psalm 78 that you were aggravated with the Israelites because of their unbelief and that they limited you. God, we repent today where we have limited you because we've tried to understand you through our understanding and our mindsets rather than the greatness and the awe and the wonder of who you are, the great I am, the deliverer, the, the breaker. 
the, our healer, our compassionate God, whose mercies are new every morning, that your love is there for us, and that we all qualify. So God, we just thank you that you're enduing us, you're imparting us with your energy, with your strength, with your power and your might to move on. We are not doing it in our strength. That's why you're feeling weak and frustrated. But the Holy Spirit wants you to know he has endued you with power from on high. And so right now, if you can lift your hand, just receive that. Just say, Lord, I give you the weakness and the, and the weariness I'm feeling and hopelessness. I turn that over to you. And Lord, I receive your, your endowment with power and your strength and your breaker anointing because of the spirit of God that lives within me. So, Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you. We thank you, oh God. We are grateful for, for testimonies of deliverance and healing. We are grateful, oh God, that you, you, you make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way, that you cause monies to come in where there didn't seem to be a way, where you cause healing to be developed when the doctors say it's a miracle. Lord, you know because you're creator God, you're Adonai, Lord, your Elohim. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for Yahweh, our deliverer, our breaker. So if you need prayer, we want you to come up. We, we have prophetic teams here today, and then we have healing teams. You know, my sister oversees the healing rooms, and, and people come on the weekends, on Saturdays, once a month. And, 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 I mean, we pray healings here as well, but the healings are awesome, left and right. The Lord just wants us to believe. He does the healing. So if you need prayer, if, if you want to come up and, and just renounce your unbelief or the hopelessness that you've been experiencing or defeat, come on up and we'll, and we'll pray for you. All right, so Cindy will die.